Hello and welcome back to Portugal for another Q&A video where the question this time is all about how we're going to keep warm for the winter. And there is quite a big clue behind me. But there are a few things to talk about because we have a couple of different living setups. One being the house in the background, but one also being this tent over here. And so we'll talk about all of this stuff and show you as many things as we can. And of course we have something extra special at the end for you, which has got nothing to do with keeping warm for the winter. Or has it? Nice wood. <laughs> uh, what's the question? How are we going to keep warm this winter? I mean, it's kind of obvious. We have a load of firewood delivered yesterday. What, are we just going to set fire to this big <laughs> pile of wood? No. So we have a special wood burner for the tent. Um, we used it last year very successfully. It's very nice. It's small, but it does kick out enough heat to keep us warm in the tent. And like we've mentioned before, we mostly live in the tent. We don't sleep in there, but we spend all our other time when we're not working in the tent or sitting out on the deck. And so we choose to heat the tent so that we can sit there in the evening and have a glass of wine and we eat in there and it's nice and cozy. And we'll take you in there in a minute, but let me tell you what this is. Mm. So this time last year, around this time, we had someone come in and harvest all our olives. And when they did that, they did a lot of pruning of the trees and then we did a little bit more pruning. And then I spent days <laughs> uh, cutting all the olive branches into small pieces so that we could use it this year as kindling. So it's been sitting here for nine About months ish. Yeah. Well, yeah, it took, took me a while to get, get it all cut. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like a year old. Uh, perfect in terms of how dry it is. I did have a cover on here, but it got ripped off in the wind. Um, it hasn't been raining for ages, so it's all still very dry. Um, so yeah, this is going to act as uh, kindling, but olive wood is also really slow burning. So it's burned slowly and it puts out a lot of heat. So it'll be great for our little wood burner. And it's a resource we already had, so why not? This is all pine that we had delivered. Uh, it cost us 110 euros. 110 euros for a truckload. Now he doesn't know how much that is. It's just he does it by the truckload. It's about two and a half cubic meters. Yeah, so last maybe three. Last year we had, as you can just see it in the background, the stack stuff. Um, we had a mix of pine and eucalyptus. Um, the problem with the eucalyptus is really hard to split, and the wood burner is quite small. So this year we just went for the pine and we will try and cut up some of the remaining eucalyptus from last year. But the pine is really super easy to split and cut, so that makes it easier for us to deal with to get it into the wood burner. So yeah, a combination of olive wood, pine and eucalyptus. This will be enough to get us through the winter. So that's probably enough about how much I like wood. So whilst we do spend a lot of our downtime in the tent, that's why we want to have the wood burner in there. We do also spend some time in the house, or at least I spend quite a lot of time in the house editing these videos. And occasionally we'll shelter in there if it's particularly rainy or windy. And so we have no heating in the house yet, and probably not for some time. And we have no electricity. We run a power cable, but we try to minimize what we plug into that. And over the winter, electricity is a bit of a scarce resource for us because we're 100% powered by solar and we get less sun in the winter, more cloud cover and more rain days. So we try to avoid using electricity for heating at this stage. And so we're considering buying a gas powered heater for putting in the house if we want to do some work downstairs as we're renovating or if I need to sit upstairs and edit videos for hours on end then it would be nice to have a heating source in there that doesn't chew through all of our battery power. So it's not something that we have at the moment, we're just considering it and looking at options, um, but that is something that we may do to keep us warm in the house over the winter. We also do have an electric blanket on the bed, which doesn't draw a lot of power at all, but is really nice and toasty warm. And that is where we're sleeping, in one of the small rooms in the house. And we did that last year as well, and it wasn't too bad most of the time. But let's go and have a look in the tent and uh, show you this wood burner. Hey. 
So, welcome to the recently reorganised tent. So, this is the wood burner. It looks really tiny on the screen <laughs> because dinky. of this wide angle lens, but it is it is quite small, but it's it's a pretty small space to heat. I mean, that's kind of the timber size. I think we've measured it before and the biggest piece of timber we can get in here is like 30 centimetres. Um, so we, I chopped these knowing what size they could be. I am going to build a log rack uh, to go in this corner here. So we can make rack jokes as well as wood <laughs> jokes. Uh, yeah, and then we use this little fan to push the heat that comes out of the stove across. You can also use the top. A couple of times we've cleaned it and put pita breads on here to warm up, um, bread rolls. We've tried dried orange peels and all kinds of things when it's on in the winter time. We've not had our first winter fire yet, but I think next week we might... Uh, we might need to fire it up. We might need to have our first one. Who do we buy this from? What's the brand called? It's called Orland. That's it. It's called Orland. They are a Scandinavian company. Uh, Danish. Danish, I think. Yeah. yeah. I really like it. It's small, but it's powerful. Eventually, we will repurpose this to our uh, outdoor indoor kitchen, which will be where the current carport is. So that's going to be a large entertaining space with a barbecue and big doors that open for the summer and then in the winter we'll close it and we'll, we'll have this in there because it needs to go somewhere else we're not just going to throw it away um so we bought this kind of knowing that we would repurpose it in the future to a kind of outdoor kitchen that's it we have some footage i think of a fire we had last time so if if my editor is clever he will slice some of that in well we only have an outdoor fire but we can show it yeah. to you because it looks kind of cool yeah we were testing it and, and breaking it in and burning all the manufacturing stuff off of it um so yeah that's how we keep warm and many layers and many blankets many blankets and hats and all the things well you do love knitting such things uh, yes so the burner inside has got a flue that comes out horizontally. It's got a, like a baffle plate on it, so it doesn't burn the tent down. Although we did have a small uh, minor burn accident last year. Uh, and then it comes up out of the chimney, as you might expect. And it's all tied down with guy ropes. It's actually remarkably sturdy. Uh, even in high winds here, it's, uh, it's never blown over, fallen over or anything like that. So it's a really nice little system. The one downside of installing a flue or a chimney type thing in a tent like this is you have to cut a hole in the window of the tent. And a combination of that and having a number of cats who like to visit us, they've completely destroyed this back window by jumping in and out and ripping the mosquito screen. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a disaster that we will have to sort out at some point in the future, but it's a small price to pay for being warm for the winter. So there we go, a nice simple one today. But as we often like to do in these kind of videos, we have something extra to show you as well. And let me go and grab it and we'll talk a little bit about something else that may keep us warm this winter. So a few weeks ago we harvested a load of chilies out of the garden and a couple of days ago we had a video that showed some of the things that we did with them but because some time has passed in reality but not for you uh, since we made those things, we're now in a position to taste some of them. And one in particular was the cowboy candy, which is something that needed a bit of time to mature in the jar and for the chilies to soak up a bunch of the sugar syrup. And so because we didn't do a taste test in that video, I thought it'd be a nice thing to do in this one and see if the jury is still out about cowboy candy. Here's a spoon. Oh, I have a spoon. Thank you. Have a fork. <laughs> Let's see. So you made this and you weren't sure about it. Why, why were you unsure about it? Well, it just seems weird, doesn't it? What, eating candied chili? Yeah. Apparently. I mean, I can smell the chili, so I don't think it's... Uh... The chilies are still hot. I'm glad we didn't keep the seeds in. It's quite tasty. <laughs> you chopped all the peppers up and put them in the sink to pop all the seeds mm. out. 
And because I had read that if you leave the seeds out, seeds in, it's going to be very spicy. So I was like, I'm taking all the seeds out because I knew our chilies were really spicy. That is spicy, but quite tasty. Is it? Mm-hmm. So the jury is in. Yeah, I would. I mean, I can imagine having this on a plate with a burger. Uh, like if you do a barbecue and you have some load of. Mm, hold on. <laughs> mm? yep. It's good. Mm. Well, yeah, you can definitely smell spicy chili. My mouth, my mouth is burning. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a go here. It's definitely chilies. Definitely chilies. It's, no, it's don't got, eat too many. It's got a slow burn on it, has it? <laughs> it does. Mm. <laughs> Look at your face. You can't see fire. it, but it's it's quite amusing. Mm. It's a really nice balance, actually, because these peppers are padron peppers. They're not designed for being very hot and spicy, but we left them go on the plant a long time. But they're quite sharp and bitter as a pepper. But then there's but then there's a lot of the, the heat coming through. There are a couple of seeds left in here, but it's in this uh, sugar syrup with a few spices like turmeric, I think it was, and ginger, maybe garlic. No, just ginger and turmeric, I think. And so it's got a really interesting combination of sharp, bitter pepper, heat, and Kylie is really struggling, which is quite amusing. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, the bitterness, the sweetness, the hotness. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, we've got quite a few jars of this, and I don't really know how we would use it other than like, a, kind of like a relish. Yeah, like on the plate when you have a barbecue meat so that you can mm. have a little bit of this with... I wouldn't use it as a dessert, like they say. That doesn't yeah, it's sound... not a dessert. It's a condiment. Yeah. I mean, we could try it with some ice cream. <laughs> it might be nice. Um, okay. Mm. I mean, it cooled my mouth down, right? Yeah. I think that would be quite interesting. A bowl of, a bowl of really good quality vanilla ice cream with some of this and a little drizzle of the sauce. That'd be pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go and buy some ice cream <laughs> and um, we will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.